morning and welcome to St. Matthew's Episcopal Cathedral on this last Sunday of January. I wish to welcome you to this service today. We want to give special thanks today for the flowers which are given to the glory of God and in memory of our mother, Esther Moore, by Estella Spurzel. Thank you for the gorgeous flowers this morning. Today's service is the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. And let us say together the colic for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us all proclaim together, Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The reading from the Old Testament this morning is from the book of Deuteronomy. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people, and you shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again I see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them, saying that which I have commanded. Anyone who does not heed the words of that prophet shall, shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. You may say to yourself, how can I recognize a word that the Lord has not spoken? This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah! I will give thanks to the Lord my, with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the lands of the nations. 
The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. They are fast and forever and ever because they are truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. The reading from the New Testament is from the first book of Corinthians. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven and on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of food they eat as offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block for the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak and encouraged to the point of eating food, sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is the cause of their failing, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. This is the word of the Lord.
This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded by his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as one of the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you do to us, Jesus, with Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Good morning again. I'm glad you're here today. Today we see Jesus going into the temple, coming in with authority as they saw, and they're mesmerized by this person, this Jesus that they have come to know slightly, but they're realizing this man that has authoritative words that speaks in such a way that is different than the scribes have been doing, just repeating things, but with new words, new ideas. And a man becomes exuberant and causes a scene and looks at Jesus and says, what do you have to do with us, Jesus? What do you have to do with us, Jesus? And Jesus cast out that evil spirit, cast out the evil that was within that man. And they were further amazed as they saw this happen. Jesus casting out unclean spirits. We talk about it a few times in our gospel readings. It comes up every now and then, but it doesn't seem like that we spend very much time on that. This gospel reading today was certainly put there, and we read it today because we are recognizing the authority of Jesus, just as the people in the synagogue recognized his authority, just as even the evil or the unclean spirits recognized the authority of Jesus. And so during this time, it's a reminder for us to recognize that Jesus does have authority, that Jesus does have authority given from God, that Jesus does have authority in our lives, that Jesus does have the authority to go around and teach all of these new people following him how to live their lives. How to not have unclean spirits, but how to have a clean spirit. How to become closer to God. That Jesus has that authority, and it is to Jesus that we should listen and understand and hear and feel and see of what it is that we are to do in our lives. To get rid of those unclean spirits, and that Jesus is there to help us do that. We don't talk about that much these days, about unclean spirits, about demons that we have. And I don't mean the demons that we see on TV, those scary programs where somebody is possessed or where the house is possessed, and perhaps they call in the priest and some priests come in and do a great job and some run away screaming and in fright. We don't talk about those so much. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the demons inside of all of us. I want to tell you a story about Stanley. Now, Stanley's not a person. Stanley's my plant at home. 
Stanley's my favorite plant at home. I've had Stanley for quite some time now, apparently long enough to name Stanley. Stanley has produced the most beautiful flowers over the past seven years. But over the past year, maybe year and a half, the flowers have not been blooming as much lately. And the more I looked at Stanley, the more I noticed that he's getting congested with all of the things that have come up and have died. Getting congested and so the, the live parts of Stanley are getting choked out. I tried pruning back the tops. I tried cutting it down as far as I could. I didn't really want to mess with Stanley. I didn't want to take him out of his pot and replant him. So I just kept trimming his limbs back, the ones that weren't doing well, the ones that just were dead, that just weren't producing. I trimmed them down. And about a month ago, I realized what I had was some live bits of Stanley growing up with this dead shrubbery in the middle. Finally, it was time to take him out, take him out of the pot, break him all apart, get rid of all of the dead stuff down to the roots, take all of the good rooted plant of Stanley that was left, put it back in with some new fresh soil, put him back in a pot, and put him in the window to get that light again. So far, Stanley's doing great. Stanley is beginning to grow a little bit stronger, a little bit higher, and the leaves are standing up better. Sometimes in our lives, we have these things that at one time seem to be going well, and, or maybe other things that weren't going so well, but they became part of our lives. We have things in our lives that maybe even sneak up but they grow roots and they keep continuing to sneak up through the, our growth and they sneak up through and they begin to choke us out. I think that's not just for some of us, but I believe that that's for all of us. Sometimes things happen all at once to us and sometimes things grow so slowly within us that we don't even recognize it's there until it begins to choke us out. Those demons that we possess inside. Yes, today I do believe that we have demons around us. We have demons within us. Demons are those things, or those unclean spirits, or that evil, are those things that keep us from flourishing the way that God wants us to flourish, that keeps us from flowering the way God wants us to flower, that keep us from loving God to our best ability. Things that within us grab a hold of us and pull us down. That keep us from growing in the sight of God. Things such as mistrust. Mistrust isn't something that happens all at once. Mistrust is something that tends to grow. We have a few things that happen in our lives and we begin to mistrust. We have a few more things that happen in our lives and eventually we start to mistrust everything. And mistrust of some things is good. Skepticism is good at some point. But when we begin to mistrust everything, how soon is it before we begin to mistrust God? To mistrust Jesus. To mistrust the Holy Spirit that's around us trying to guide us. Things such as worry. Oh, I'm a worrier. Worrying runs in my DNA, in my family. I worry all the time. Sometimes that's okay. Sometimes in little bits it's okay to have a little bit of worry because it keeps us on our toes, I think. But when that worry becomes the primary part of our lives and we are not able to smile and to lift up and to show our brightness, when we are not able to look at the bright side of things, when we are not able to see God's glory anymore, then worry becomes a problem. One of the big things that's come up these days that seems to be growing and growing and growing like a cloud, like an unclean cloud around 
this world is this hatred, this division, this distrust and disdain for other people because they are different from us. And that is not something either that just happened to us. It's something that is growing and growing and growing within us. And we all know what that looks like when it goes too far. We all know what that looks like when we have some sort of prejudice against others, some sort of maybe division, some sort of disagreement with others. Disagreement is healthy, but when it becomes hate, when it becomes violence, then it does not become what God wants us to be. It becomes unclean. Perhaps there's addictions, addictions that start over time. They don't happen right away. Addictions to food, addictions to alcohol, addictions to drugs, addictions to our social media, things that don't just happen, but they grow over time until at some point we aren't paying attention to God anymore, but rather to our brains and our bodies, and that's all that matters. Jesus didn't just come to cast out unclean spirits like we see on TV, the demons that we see, the red man with the ears or the, the horns. Jesus didn't come to cast out those demons. Jesus came to tell us that we need to clean out all of the unclean spirits. In fact, he sent out his his disciples two by two and said to go out and to heal and to cast out unclean spirits. To go out and to heal and to cast out unclean spirits. To cast out what is unclean within people. To cast out the hatred. To cast out the division. To cast out the mistrust. To cast out those things that were taking them away from God. And they were very successful. This isn't easy. Anybody that's ever had an addiction knows this can be the most difficult thing they will ever experience in their lives. Getting over that addiction. Getting that uncleanness out of them. It isn't easy to turn from being a hateful person because it's grown for so long and to change it can't happen overnight. None of this is easy. But we have an ally, don't we? Because we have somebody with authority. We have Jesus Christ. We have the Holy Spirit. We have God to help us to cast these things out. And still it's not going to be overnight. Still it's going to take some time. It's going to take some time, and perhaps we need to be pulled apart a little bit. Perhaps we need to be taken out of the pot in which we live. Perhaps we need some new soil around us. We need some nurturing. We need some help. Jesus told us that God should be the most foremost authority in our lives. And if God is not the foremost authority, then we need to ask for God's help. Jesus told us community and loving our neighbors is one of the most important things in our lives. Because if we are not in right communion with God, sometimes it takes those others, those others to love us and to help us. Help us to get out of that pot. Help us to remove that uncleanness that is within us, that dead shrubbery that grows and keeps us from flowering. Jesus understood the importance of community. He gathered a community, and he sent them out to gather more community. Our entire following of Jesus and the Christian way was to gather community so that together we can make God a primary part of our lives and to realize that God is the authority in our lives. We can't do this alone. It takes each other. 
that when we have division and hate for each other, that makes things a little bit more difficult. My friends, Jesus had the authority. Jesus asked us to clean out those things that are unclean within us, but also tells us that he is there to help. We have but to only realize what it is within us that needs to be changed. If we raise our fist, maybe we stop and wonder, why did I just do that? Maybe I need to think about that. If we scream at somebody, maybe we need to stop for a moment and think, where did that come from? Why is that there? Why am I reacting that way? If we feel like on Facebook or other social media that we just need to sit there and just put people down all day or get into very angry and hateful conversations, maybe we need to put that phone down and think, where did that come from? What is the root of that? What needs to be plucked out, cultivated differently? Perhaps if we have problems with things in our lives such as these. We need to find out where the roots are. Start out cleanly, on a clean path. It's time to cast out our own demons and to know that Jesus is there to help us do just that. Because once they are cast out, the joy and knowledge and freedom that will surround us and lift us up and make us better able to see God around us wherever we are and better able to see the blessings in our lives and better able to live in hopefulness and joy and to be living in a life in the kingdom of God here on earth that Jesus was sent to tell us all about. It's time to cast out our own demons to ask for help from God. Amen. Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death 
and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we gather in your name, Jesus, because we know who you are. You know our deepest needs and weaknesses, and we look to you in hope. Hear our prayers, Holy One of God. The world is hurting and restless for you, Lord. The earth is stressed and cries for protection. Its peoples cry out in hunger and fear. We turn to you in need of deliverance. Hear our prayers, Holy One of God. We pray for your church as it walks the way of life. May your people and their leaders know deeply your loving, liberating, life-giving presence. Hear our prayers, Holy One of God. We pray for those who govern all over the world, that they may pursue justice and practice peace. Equip them with the courage and resources to respond to the needs of their people. Hear us. Hear our prayers, Holy One of God. For those who have lost their freedom to addiction, for those who wrestle with worry, for those who struggle with mobility, communication, and relationship. For those who are ill and those facing surgery or treatments. For those who will soon give birth and those who have lost a pregnancy. We look to you for the care of these to give them hope through your presence. And especially today we pray for. Hear our prayers, Holy One of God. We commend to you the souls of those who have died, praying especially today for... Ray and Leslie. We ask you to comfort those whose heart aches with grief. Hear our prayers, Holy One of God. And now let us pray for our own needs or the needs of others, either silently or aloud. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lights, lives may be the light to the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And now let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.